What's up, everybody? Another good evening from uh, right here. We, we need a name for the studio. We do. What do you- we, we need a sponsor to, to be like the live from the Agzaga studio. <laughs> uh-huh. Well, that's what I was. I was actually just joking, <clears throat> only halfway joking. But uh, uh, somebody was talking about where we're building our house, and they were like, "Are you going to build a podcast studio out there?" And and I, which I told Marsha, I was like, "We'll just have to load this thing up and move it over there." Uh, and and I said. Uh, now, it'd be really cool if uh, we get sponsored heavily enough to where they'll just build our studio. And yeah, and we could be like, this is, yeah, so and so studios, Ag well, yeah. Studios, whatever. Well, yeah, it's like, you know, whether it's a sports thing, you know, the sports talk show or Coming whatever. Coming at you live from the Talk Dirt to Me studios. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think my buddy you know, that passed away, John Bartolo, if I remember right, I think Sig Sour. It is. Yeah, I knew they were a big sponsor of his, but yeah, which I have thought about that. So when when do you think y'all will be in your house? I know the builders <sighs> never want to tell you. A year from now, he said nine months most likely, and that's that so, was so like a year from now. Yeah, yeah, that. Which I hope we don't run into the same issue. Which they're killing it. My buddy, or my well, it's my buddy building it. Rick, uh, he actually listens to the show, so give Rick a shout out. Southern View Homes, yeah. uh, if you need need a good, honest builder. Uh, I've known Rick a long time, and he, and he's a veteran, so he supports your vets too. But um, he said about nine months, I think, from the time that they started, which the weather killed us for like the first month. We literally closed, and then it just rained nonstop. Which I know Drew was telling me that that looked like they were going to exceed their their right, time. It's something about yeah, if you run past like a certain point, on they your say line. if you have a year. This is what they yeah. explained to me. Like, And so I think we'll get it because, man, they've been hammering it. I mean, they've been out there rolling. They're putting the roof on today. So yeah, I need to ride by there. Yeah, um, you need to because everybody else does. Oh, you know, when we built our house, which that was 10 years ago, um, trying to think. My daughter was born in 14. We moved in at Christmas of 14. So it's been this Christmas be 10 years. Our builder, he warned us ahead of time. He's like, people will just – like when they see you build the house – they see that as a, an open invitation. Just come check it out. Like, like people, like you'll pull up and people will just be walking, like, like they on your property, like it, like it's a park or something. Yeah. Uh, which luckily, which you're kind of the same situation as me. You can't really see it. From but the road. it's still. I, I almost think that's made it worse. Oh, okay, because they're just gonna be nosy. Yeah. Now they're just super nosy. I, there's. I have been working at the farm store, and I'll just glance. I'll hear something. And I'll glance up, and I'll just see a vehicle pulling out of my driveway. No well, clue who they are. Well, I, and like just for for folks obviously don't know where I live. I live <coughs> on a dead end road, and the black, <laughs> and it's basically a one lane road. Like when you're it going is. down this road, because I tell people all the time, if you're coming to my house, you used to drive a damn semi down that road. Yeah. Well, I tell people if you feel <laughs> like you're at the wrong place, you're probably at the right place. Yes. Because it's through the woods, like you know. If, if you had never been there before, you might even get a little creeped out because you're like, where Texas am I going to end right up here. at the end of this road? And then you like literally have to drive through my gate, yep. which it's almost always open. And then it's gravel, and it's clearly not a county gravel road. Like yeah. it's just, But the number of people that will drive all the way down there, I'm like, what do you – like, I'll, well, that I'll actually, stop. And I'm always nice, but, hey, can I help you? Oh, we were looking for what, such and such. I'm like, well, that's nowhere near here. Like, yeah. I, 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 well – and that actually is refreshing to hear because yeah. I have been like, why in the hell are all these random people driving down my driveway? Well, I was I was at the barn earlier right about dark, and I looked up, and they didn't come all the way to my house, but they were basically turning around at my gate. <laughs> I'm like, well, what are you doing? Like, yeah. like, you know at a certain point, you're like, clearly, this, this ain't this, right. This yeah. road doesn't go anywhere. Like, there's no outlet. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, so. Well, yeah, that's what it looks like. It, they're... They're getting after it. But I good. had thought, I was like, dang, Logan's not going to be living here much longer. And we got the studio. Like, what are we going to do? Yeah, we'll just move it, which I guess the drive would be about the same for you. Or for maybe me, a tad, would it be a it, tad closer? No, as a crow flies, it may be closer, but it'll be, probably be just a mile or so further driving. But uh, yeah. Yeah, I have to figure out somebody to move this thing. Yeah, we're, we're the, the studio's in, what do you call this? Up? prefab yeah kind of like a building. mort like a mort well not a morton thing but yeah it's uh it's a 10 by 20 like it's probably deceiving for some of our our guests which 
we got her fixed up in here pretty nice. Um, yeah. And that's all I use it for now. That and there's that's where I work on my guns. But um, yeah, I have to get it moved out there. But uh, I don't know, man. I've, I've been saying I was going to put a sign up because I'm just kind of annoyed. But uh, oh, we, we've got signs up on <coughs> our gate post that like private property beyond this point. You will be murdered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Protected by Glock. You yes. Know, I don't dial 911. No. <laughs> Hey, you, know, you need to look we, at we it. We dial three five seven. Yeah, no, no, I, don't, I don't have any of those <laughs> completely redneck signs. Yeah, but we do have ones like private property beyond this point, just to kind of try to be nice. Yeah, but, uh, I mean, you, you need to go look because it was based off of your plans. Remember? I don't even remember that. Yeah, I'll tell you one funny thing. So, in, in my property joins um, state property, uh, state of Tennessee. It's um, there's a, a state fishing lake. Yeah, big pretty lake over but, there. But um, it. And like the the state also owns the, all the land around the lake. Like nobody has actual lakefront property, and so there's not supposed to be any like ATVs and all that kind of stuff on that property. But there is. People abuse that left and right, and a lot of them would come down our driveway basically and then cut over on the state. So I put up a little fence and put a sign up. Um, my wife one day was pulling down to our barn, and there's two kids. They were probably like 12 years old. They were like taking a stick and like beating the hell out of my like no trespassing <laughs> sign. Did she say anything to him? I, and I mean, oh. and she's a she was by herself. So yeah. She, but um, she kind of she drove past him before she realized that they saw her and they took <laughs> off. And I mean, she wasn't gonna like pursue. They them, didn't but, appreciate that sign you put up. Yeah, but well, but they were cutting across the corner of my property too. I mean, they were in their minds. I'm sure they thought they weren't hurting nothing, but they were cutting a trail like through my woods. I'm yeah. Like, I don't <laughs> appreciate that. So anyway, but. But yeah, we need we do need to mention agzaga.com. Yeah. Um, they are the official uh official host or, or sponsor we Speaking we're, of them, um a uh, good listener here, Zach Bruger Brugman. He uh messaged me. He's been a, a good loyal listener of the show for a long time. He uh sent me a picture here on Facebook. Check it out. Thanks for the code, Agzaga. He ordered he said, got the American flag net wrap, and they threw in a free American flag. Yes, I saw where they were doing that now. Um, yeah, yeah. So, as always, the, 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 the net wrap is kind of their bread and butter. That's how they got started before they were even um, agzaga.com. So, you're, I'm confident you will never find a better deal than what they can get you on the net wrap. And that's even before you use the discount code. Talk dirt, all caps, all one word. Um but uh, you know the uh, I, I was messing around on the website earlier today because I was just like ah, I need to I need to just check see if they got any in, anything new they're pushing. Um, but one thing <coughs> that I think that is relatively new to them uh, is the uh, the fuel cans, the, the the actual real style ones, which they can't even call them fuel cans because hold on with the normal hose. Yeah, um, really. Uh, the VP Racing um, yeah. fuel, which, of course, they can't call them fuel cans because that would make the government mad. But I always say that the post office is probably the uh, the greatest example of how the, the government could, you know, screw up a wet dream. <laughs> but, uh, no, the the fuel cans is the uh, probably the next best, you know. What is it called on there, on their site? They're, I forget what they're under, but that uh i believe it's vp racing but i bought several of them in the past um but they're just a, they're just a straight up five gallon jug with a hose on them and a vent it ain't Man, that, that, that gonna, crappy i'm oh, yeah. gonna get some because i i and hate I get, and they are a lot cheaper than what i paid for them two or three <coughs> years ago um oh yeah but the way the, these gas cans are they've now, ruined got, them well and, and the i don't even know what the nozzles all like and they've got some you know, well i got a big reason. stupid five gallon one and I use it on the farm, and there was this... I was trying to put fuel in the seed tender the other day. Well, it's got this stupid thing. You have to actually push in and then down. Yeah. And you got to hold it. Like, And I'm trying to put it into a... I couldn't even get it to reach in there, so I needed the flex hose. But our yeah, other one... Oh, man, yeah. The, they call them commodity jugs because, again, they can't, I guess legally call them fuel cans but Dude, y'all need to go get some of these commodity jugs and got the flex hose gallon. they come in all different colors of course if you're going to put just gasoline on by the red one yeah um but uh yeah it's made by that vp racing fuels um but yeah they i, I i've got a couple of them and yeah I, I won't even go back to the old style well because then the, the 
the little nozzle breaks on them. And then well, it's and it pours warm. gas on your hands. Yep. I spill more gas out of these stupid ones than I did the old ones. Oh, yeah, ones. great for the environment there. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, man, it just, yeah, you can't get me started on them. I'm going to put in here commodity jugs. Yeah, they call them commodity jugs. Check those out. Be always, the, all the bail net wrap, the twine, if you're somebody that does the silage wrap, um, check those out. The quick hitches, it's crazy, but they'll ship those quick hitches right to your door, just like anything else. Um, yeah, 10% off with that discount code. Um, Talk dirt. All caps, all one word. Use it or you're an idiot. Well, like um, we talked about last week, I don't want to go on and on, but the Therapies, you will not beat the deal they have on the Therapies, especially if you're using it for the first time and you need the bundle, including the applicator. Um, my brother just used it this week. He, he bought um, a load of calves just like we did a week ago. So um, Awesome. We, we all believe in that product, too. All right. Uh, we got some questions and or, or emails. We got a really cool thing we want to talk about tonight. And I'll, I'll tell you guys, we're going to dive into the, the tractor cade of 1979. We had a, a listener write in and mention that we needed to talk about it. And, um, man, it is really pretty fascinating. And it's kind of cool to do kind of a compare and contrast because I got some of today's stats versus then. Um, but before we get into that, I've got some emails to cover. And let's see here. I think... I think we got to this one. I know we answered some of these. Kyle Hanks, he had wrote in, but this says part two. Remind me if we mentioned this. So we are currently taking over my father-in-law's row crop operation. Have we already gone to this one? Mm. As Bobby Lee mentioned, the margins on corn and soybeans aren't great, and the big operations here just keep getting bigger. So a couple years ago, we started this adventure experiment to do freezer beef, and much like Bobby Lee, we also have a waiting list and also have the same customers wanting pork. That's a whole other story. As far as numbers that I would like to run through, okay, no, because see, we were wondering his numbers. Yeah, because he was talked about they were going to do the barns yep. to, to, to be able to do them all indoors. Yeah. He I said, because I, I don't remember him mentioning pork. No, and he, he said, as far as numbers that I'd like to run through a building, I'm not overly sure, but I would like to be able to do a few batches of steers throughout the year, and I would also like to build something that will allow for growth. Yeah, um, and the pork yeah, is definitely something. Yeah, there, oh, there'll be he the hit the problem. button too quick. He wrote another one. Okay. He said, I hit the submit button too quick. In the end, I'm just looking for something more sustainable for this operation and to ensure that the next generation gets the opportunity to farm like my wife and I have. With the margins and row crop farming getting thinner and thinner, I just want to diversify this farm. I think that's a great idea. <clears throat> and, and I do, I agree, man. I think it's good to go into it really with the mindset of like giving yourself space to grow yeah and i and i mean diversifying and doing the pork thing too i think that's i mean absolutely there'll be demand for that you know we talked about the what was the name of our chicken processing the, the mother pluckers the, the bad mother pluckers the bad mother pluckers some other pluckers um yeah the, the chicken all that um just cause people like well like we mentioned with corbett last week the people that are picky about stuff like that you know they can afford to pay yeah you know 20 50 however much percent more versus what they could just buy a commodity beef product at the grocery store or chicken or pork or whatever we'll do it um i think the pork if i was going to diversify any further i would definitely do pork before i would do chicken just because again I'm not a mother plucker yet. And, um, <laughs> I, I don't. I don't know how, how that I want to get into to processing all my own chicken. Where the they're pork, just so well, pigs. I was gonna say chickens are so dirty, nasty. Well, but well, but of course, when it comes to pork processing, you do it the exact same way you do the beef. Or yeah, at least we do. I, I fed pigs out for two years, and yeah, we load them up and take them to the same. Pro- I mean, literally the exact same guy that does my beef. Um, but it was. Pork takes a little different facilities. Um, I had a very makeshift setup, and two, getting those suckers on and off of the trailer. Did I did I say anything about how when I took my steers, my first group of steers to get processed three weeks ago? I don't think so. I, I got there, and um, I always try to get there early because it, it's well. This year I killed on three straight Mondays. And I had to be at work, so I try to get there at seven. That gives me time to get unloaded and everything. Yeah, get back to my office. Well, I get there and there's already a trailer there, and I'm like, damn. And they had two pigs on there, and I was like, "Oh, damn!" Because I've done this before. Yeah, and I, yeah, those bastards would not get off that trailer. <laughs> and they're they, walking. What do they weigh? Three hundred, four hundred pounds? Yeah, yeah. And uh, they were 
they were cussing them. I was like, oh, buddy, I've been there. And then the, the, the processor that does this, he's gotten a lot bigger since I first started going to him. When I first started going, they had nowhere to unload animals. Yeah. Didn't matter what you took them, they'd say, hey, step around the corner here. They'd go out there and they'd shoot them right there on the trailer. Yeah. N- nothing inhumane about it at all. I mean, it's, they're getting shot. One it's way a BB another. gun. It takes quite a few <laughs> shots. You know, you got to kind of soften the skin it's, first. It's a fully semi automatic BB gun. Yeah, fully semi automatic. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> But, you know, as, as it's taking them a few minutes and they're clearly not getting anywhere getting these pigs off the trailer, I'm like, I mean, they used to always shoot them on the trailer. Why not, why not just shoot them on the trailer? And eventually it came to that. They're, yeah. like, they're like, can you back up a little further? Yeah. <laughs> so, I, so I backed my truck and trailer up. and yeah, they, Can you, uh, I mean, can you hot stick them? Will they get off with a hot stick? Uh, I, man, they are so damn stubborn. I, no, I, I, I Yeah. I, my biggest problem one, I think that by the second year, I got smart. Because, I mean, cattle, I mean, I don't know, I've loaded cattle my whole life. You just drive them and they go. You know, their you know, flight response, you can get them to go forward as long as you don't have a, just a terrible setup. But those pigs, like, if they don't want to go, they just literally sit down <laughs> and just will not move. Yeah. And um, the first year, I and I had a, a buddy, because I wouldn't even sell them those. I just, a buddy was like, yeah, I'll take one. So I was like, all right. And, and so I just. You know, he just helped cover the feed costs for me. And he's like, yeah, yeah, I'll help you haul them. Well, the, of course, the morning comes when I need to haul them, and he, he had something to do. Yeah. So, so I was loading them all by myself. And I, oh, man, it was definitely not for young years. <laughs> and, um, but then the next year, I got smart. I backed the trailer up there, and I started feeding them in the trailer for like the last week or two before yeah. I took them. And they loaded, and everything went a lot better. But I think it was still a situation where like two of them got on the trailer, and one of them wouldn't. Yeah. And I, and I swore, I was like, I'll never do this again. And I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, but. they're, they are actually super smart. Um, oh yeah. I know, like I went to this, this trapping seminar because I like to, I don't, I've never really trapped any hogs, but I trap coyotes and stuff like that, beaver. And TWRA did this trapping class and they had this, they would set up these panels in like a circle and they'd have corn in the middle and uh, they said initially it was just like uh, basically they would come in there and they could just trap it and it would drop a gate. They had a camera up and they would know when they went in there and they could trigger it and it would drop the gate. Well, the mom started to figure out, or no, they didn't have the camera yet. They had a thing in there where it would, once they, the pigs got in there, then it would drop the gate. Well, the mother, she figured out what was going on, and so she would stand under the gate. It's funny you're telling the story. I talked, maybe may been the same guy, uh, guy I went to high school with, that's TWRA, manages area really? near us, was telling me that exact story. Yeah. How she would stand in the gate, would let the piglets go in and eat, and she would stand there, they'd trip it, and she'd just stand there, let, let the gate hit her on top of the back. Yep. He's like, this gate would break me or you oh yeah it weighed like several hundred pounds and um she'd just stand there until they got done eating and they would uh let all the piglets would come out and then she she just kind of shrugged the gate off and back up <laughs> yeah out. Like, yeah god dang when they finally like what he said they had to i know they'd have to start just letting them go in there and they get them but man they said when you do get them man they would shoot like 20 at a time oh yeah but they're a terrible invasive species like it's oh yeah what's well, you know, I, you know, I'm sure you talk to all the same people, but some of the guys in our area that got a lot of farmland, they're like, yeah, it sounds like fun. He's like, <laughs> and then you do it, and he's like, it turns into work real fast. Yeah, yeah, because uh-huh. then you got to clean up after. Yeah, but, um, but yeah, because the law in Tennessee is if you trap them, you have to shoot them dead in that tra- – like you – very strict about you better not turn them loose you better not try to transport them anywhere i mean like hey it was funny that they are an invasive species the goal is a total extermination whenever i was uh like i guess it was actually when we first started having the hogs come around me and dad noticed some of their sign in the river bottom and uh and i mean they're said they will ravage a bean field or cornfield and so we were like trying to figure out what we needed to do well, it was so bad in some areas that Tennessee had created this thing called the wheat. It was like wheat unit. And it was wild hog eradication and something, something. like. And that was all it was for. And you could call them. If you had wild hog sign, you'd call them, and they basically would give you a permit. And you can kill them 
any means necessary. Yeah, like, like you could, if you had some explosives, you could set up explosives and blow them back. I think yeah, you could yeah, poison yeah, the state, them. The state like, has been very aggressive in, like, no, we are going to do everything in our power before they get out of control. Because once once you've got them out of control, there's yeah. no no control in the population. Yeah. Um, They've shot them in helicopters. Like, I, one of my buddies that works at TWRA, he had told me they, they like, hired, basically, <laughs> snipers and helicopters, and they flew helicopters and were shooting Which them. They, uh, yeah, they, they definitely did that. I think they didn't really want to advertise that when they did it because yeah. they didn't want any of the bleeding heart, you know, animal rights people getting involved. But um, I was asking him about that. He's like, yeah, we, we, we had that kind of go again. But he said, when, you, when you're doing that, you need a helicopter pilot who is – ain't scared of nothing and is I'm like yeah i don't know if i want to be on that <laughs> yeah. but um apparently he said yeah the, the it was it was kind of a situation where they and it wasn't a real good day as far as the wind yeah um i think i was it's funny, they, they shoot them like with buckshot yeah um you know yeah it's so not they're, like so they're pretty damn close you know i'm envisioning uh for me i would envision the movie oh have you ever seen the movie i guess it's full metal jacket i have but i don't know that i'm there's a part they're flying in and it is full metal jacket because the guy that calls himself joker or whatever he uh he's over there sitting in the helicopter and they got a machine gunner and it's this big ass dude at the door and he's just going he's on like a freaking gatlin gun and he's going get some get some and he's just like mowing down and he's shooting women and children that are like running through the paddy fields and the guy goes how do you shoot the women and children like 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 asking him like morally how do you do it and the guy goes it's easy you just lead them a little more like you know he's like like he just is just mowing them down that's so, awful yeah. it is, but that's what i think of with the hogs they need like smile with it. they need that guy with the gatlin gun just mowing them yeah. down so yeah, and I, I would say um, they've done a pretty good job because i oh, don't yeah. think that they've gotten to be more I mean, no they're probably better where any illusion that we're gonna totally eradicate them is probably a fantasy but i mean we're just a few miles from mississippi river as we sit right here and you don't ever see them up no in, yeah. in, up on top of the bluff they're all down just just right around the river but, they've done yeah they've done really well so yeah. well kyle we appreciate you writing in man I always never hesitate to yeah, write yeah in. we got way yep. off track there, which is <laughs> typical but um yeah yeah i would say if you got a setup where you can do hogs too you know after you know maybe you don't want to feed steers year round i mean there will be a demand and um and for for local people around us that are looking for somebody doing hogs reach out to me um i can get you in touch with the guy that's what i, I got a buddy that does it and um yeah i'm like okay i'm, I'm glad to pay him once a year yep. to buy to buy a hog from him rather than me feed one out yeah I, I i know what i'm good at and um <laughs> handling hogs is not it so yeah well maybe again one day yeah y'all go to talkdirtpodcast.com go to our contact page and that's where you can submit your questions uh all right this next question comes in from jd jd says thank you bobby lee for the info on feeding out on the feeding out program i am feeding out 12 steers it will be for sale the info help thank you again yeah i am a big john wayne fan also uh also what are your top three john wayne western movies uh before i read the last part of this question you go what are your top three so um Man, I, I'll just give you some of my favorites. So McClintock, um, the Cowboys, and, and I don't know that the Cowboys was absolutely his best acting job, but that may be one of my favorites. Is that Which, the one with the kids? Yeah, it's one of the only movies where he gets killed. Yeah, one of the only movies he dies in. Um, spoiler alert! Um, but I mean, the movies. Like, You've had seventy years to watch the movie yeah, or whatever. Um, so, uh, <coughs> Big Jake. Um, is it the searchers? Does he get killed in the searchers? Man, I, I don't know. I, I've seen that one. I'm not as that that one wasn't necessarily one of my favorites. Um, I actually had a, a patient the other day, and I had to give one of my assistants homework to do. Um, a dog came in. His name was Jacob McCandles. <laughs> I, I, I said, "That's Big Jake," and uh, she's like, "What?" I was like, "You don't know who Jacob McCandles is," <laughs> and uh, I said, well, "You got to go home tonight and watch Big Jake with yeah. John Wayne." But um. Yeah, Big Jake's another good one. Um, I don't know. I like Rio Lobo. I don't know. If I had gun to my head, had to put top three, I'd probably say McClintock, um, Big Jake, and the Cowboys. 
Yeah. I, I'm, I'm very partial to the Western John Waynes. I know some of the, the war movies like the, um, you know, are, they're really good too. Man, yeah. I, I see, I am not a huge John Wayne guy. Yeah. I'm a, more of a, I, I, I feel well, we, like. We all have our flaws. <laughs> I feel like in the Western world, you got your Clint Eastwood guys and your John Wayne guys. Now, I like both of them. But, I, I like Clint Eastwood, but I think, man, John Wayne was just. I mean, he came before Clint. But I but I'm a Clint Eastwood guy. But on John Wayne movies, what is it, Rio Bravo or Rio Grande? Which one well, is it? Was Rio Lobo and Rio Bravo. Rio Bravo is one I like. Um and then the Cowboys man, and, and then honestly from there I have a hard time saying. Um but now I can tell you Chisholm, did I mention Chisholm? Nope. Chisholm's a good one. <clears throat> but I tell you on Clint, I'm a I a fistful of dollars is probably my number one. And, like, I hate to say it because it's just everybody says it, but the good, the bad, and the ugly is definitely got to be in my top three. And then the other one is probably High Plains Drifter or maybe, I don't know, it's tough. Maybe the Outlaw Josie Wales. It actually could be three. The Unforgiven is pretty bad at the bone, too. And, you know, he's like 60 in The Unforgiven. Like, he's old in that movie. Or getting up there. I mean, he's um, versus his other roles. So, I don't know. I'm more of a Clint guy. Hey, that's what it's something. I want y'all to let us know. Uh, comment on Spotify. You can you can respond to us on the YouTube, whatever. Uh, let us know what you are. Are you more of a John Wayne fan or are you more of a Clint Eastwood fan? On the Westerns. Let's keep it Western here. Yeah. Um, speaking of YouTube, I do got to apologize have not gotten up the video with Corbett because we did have some audio issues uh, in the first like eight to ten minutes. Some of you may have noticed that it's not as crystal clear, and then it gets, I think, really good uh, after about that time frame. So the editing has been kind of a nightmare, and frankly, I've just been busy as hell. Um, but yeah. it's going to rain. It looks like it's going to rain tonight. So the second part of this question, I saved it because this kind of tripped me out a little bit. Kind of, it's funny. Um, Hank, got a question for you. Have you thought about planting any muscadine grapes or making muscadine jelly for your farm store? Now, I laugh. Man, I appreciate it. I uh, appreciate you right now. But I got to give a little story here on Hank. Um, so he's, he's, he's talking to me. And uh, hey, have you ever heard about how pissed off Paul Paul would get when somebody would call him Hank? Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> Did I, I may have shared it. Did I share the story on here where I basically eviscerated the Domino's worker for calling me Hank? <laughs> you did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm well, not. Well, it immediately, you know, somebody doesn't know you very well. It's like when people call me Robert. I'm like, I immediately know. I was like, well, you just found my name on the internet or yeah. something. I actually Which, had a phone call from a guy today. He was really nice. I have no idea how he got my number or name. He's like, hey, and it was, I don't even know why I answered his out of town number. And uh, I just thought, oh, whatever. He's like, hey, you know, Mr. Robert Hanks. I was like, yeah. And he said, uh, I was wondering, you asked about a property we own. He's like, if I could turkey hunt it. And I was like, man, <coughs> like, in all honesty, I said, I'm sitting here looking at the clock. As soon as I get off work, I'm probably going to. Turkey hunt. <laughs> yeah. I was like, otherwise, you know, I, I might, but I probably I'd have a dozen other friends that would want to. But anyway, yeah. Yeah, anybody else who calls me Robert, I know it's like, all right, you don't know me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and it is no I'm not mad at you, J D. I just had to point that out. Like uh when I saw Hank, like Well maybe he he's in on the joke. Like <laughs> Maybe hey, you might have watched that episode where because yeah, I mean I, I literally made a Domino's worker contemplate suicide <laughs> after that phone call. because um, they just they called me Hank like three times in a row and it just finally the big C couldn't stay out of me at that point. I don't people call me because, of course I go by like Bobby Lee. Some people call me like Doctor Lee. I'm like, well, that's <laughs> that's my middle name, but I'm like, well, out of whatever, it doesn't bother me. Doctor Lee almost sounds like kind of got a Japanese hue to it. You know, funny story. Um, when I was in school, like this was in like sixth grade or something, a girl later told me that she was like a new girl coming to our school, and somebody was saying my name. They're like Bobby Lee, Bobby Lee, and uh, <laughs> she immediately pictured me as an Asian dude. Yes. <laughs> well, you know, the comedian. There's a comedian yeah, Bobby is. Lee. Yeah. He's Asian. But but that's his last name. Yeah. yeah. Um, but she, uh, yeah, yeah, she admitted that to me like years later. She said, "Yeah, I, when I'd heard of you before I met you, I thought you were Asian." Yeah. Well, okay, uh, I'm, I love Asian. <laughs> yes. 
Well, no, I, I haven't really thought on the muscadine grapes, but I do plan on going great, doing some grapes after a couple years. That's something we want to kind of start putting in some vineyards. Yeah. Trying to, we're trying to like kind of grow certain ex- ser- uh, sections as we we go. Um, you can do some muscadine wine. I I actually want to eventually have a winery out there. That is something like. And especially, I'm thinking like uh, maybe like a nude winery, where like you can come out there and sun uh, sunbathe naked and drink some wine. I can think about it's like the episode on, I believe it was Duck Dynasty where they like bought a vineyard. Yeah, <laughs> and really? they were did they do it nude? I, you know, I don't think I remember that as part of it. Well, you yeah. know, you can you really could press into this hippie thing because now you know that people sun their anus. <laughs> You, you, talk, you mentioned that. <laughs> those, it, and I guess it's one of those days where your phone is listening to you. Did you I had find like a some? random thing like on Instagram, these dudes. <laughs> I don't know how they keep a straight face, but they're like, they were somewhere like going before the city council like. Oh, yeah, you sent that to me. Yeah. Yeah. They're yeah. like wanting to be able to sun their buttholes in yeah. public. I was like, how are they keeping it? Because they're clearly, it's all a parody, but it's. I'm, I'm, <laughs> and they do I, a I good job. Is, I think it is. But like how they did not, they kept a straight face the, like they're just uh, yeah. also meeting like adamant that they should be able to and they do suntan in the nude yeah yeah, yeah. but no I, I honestly one of my long-term goals would be to have like potentially go into the wine side of things but you can i know people that pick you know wild muscadines to make yeah you know, and i think our grandmother used to yeah um we, we've actually got a vine on a tree right beside our office and, and like it makes a mess really yeah um but a lady that used to work for us they would she would always she was real big into doing all kinds of stuff like that yeah and she would gather a bunch and do that <coughs> you nice. knock yourself out yeah all right well jd appreciate it man yeah I'll, I'll look into the muscadines when we get to that point but yeah right now we haven't entered the vineyard yet but it'll it's coming uh joe you write in he says hey guys love the show and all the wide range of topics you cover me and my brother are just starting to farm this year and ended up renting about 200 acres that will be put into corn, beans this spring. It's That's a per- great pretty start. Good start. Yeah, that that is. exactly what I was thinking. My brother is still at college studying agronomy, and I work in the dairy industry as a nutritionist. Someday, we would like both to be able to farm full-time. How do we grow to a point when this is possible? We are in a competitive area with large dairies. Oh, man, Corbett hit on that last week. An urban sprawl taking a lot of acres here in southern Wisconsin. Southern Wisconsin. Okay. It seems like with input costs, four dollar corn and machinery making any money, let alone enough to support two people, will be hard. Also, love the farmer wants a wife stuff. You'll have to have Brandon back on. I've been talking to Brandon all week, um, <laughs> so me and him have become good buddies. Uh, yeah, I won't have him back on because he was. We were just talking some potato, some spuds, as they refer to them today. All right, man. This is a million dollar question. Um, so the first thing I would say is, <clears throat> you're on the right track. Yeah, getting 200 acres to start. This is this was year one. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, it's really. I mean, I know people that start with like 10 acres. Yes. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, in row cropping, you know, they're just they're oh, just dude, yeah. getting their feet wet. Um, and and nothing wrong with that, of course. But um, man, you're going to need to find a niche. I I, I don't recommend. I don't think you would either just raising corn just to yeah. sell to the local elevator, um, which I imagine if they're in dairy country, a lot of the corn is, is probably chopped for silage, um, which I don't even know. Shit, I wouldn't know I'd, any idea how that works. How, like, yeah, if, if you're growing corn silage that you then sell the silage to somebody, if there's a way to do something really unique with that, um, or if they think they want to get into the dairy, which, I mean, we have no dairies in this area. Yeah. But I know from, well, like listening to Shark Farmer podcast, and they, of course, he interviews a wide range of people. But a lot of the dairies that he talks to that seems like are doing good that they're they've opened their own creamery that they're they're doing something where they can, you know, milk a hundred cows or maybe sixty cows, whatever small dairy by by, you know, national standards, but can still make a good living for you know. It's that direct to consumer thing, man. Yeah, yeah. J- just selling a, com- you know, just milk, you know, by the tanker truck to the, you know, local, you know, processor. That's probably not going to be super profitable. Just like selling, you know, truckloads of corn and soybeans to the local grain elevator 
Yeah. Not 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 much margin there. Well, and that's what I was going to say. Like I, man, and and I in no way want to be discouraging. Uh, I want to preface that because we need. I've talked about it. I harp all the time on how we need young new people in the industry. But like I can tell you how to, like to grow to a point where two people are going to be supported. You know, I don't know. If they got families. You know, one. Both of you, if you're married, you need to keep your spouses working uh, to help the cash flow. Two, I can tell you right now, I'm this year, because I lost some ground to solar panels, this year I'm working right around 1,300 acres. You could not support two people on there. Like, I'm, they're still, I like them still like, oh, shit, I hope I can afford to myself. Uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. so... I mean, now in Wisconsin, I don't know the yields. I don't know what kind of yields they're making in southern Wisconsin. But, man, reading this, I mean, I have really just become a believer in this direct-to-consumer thing. Like, that's – I mean, that's why I'm, I've am i built a farm store. And uh, I was planting peppers today. It was too wet. I needed to spray, uh, but it was too wet. We had six-tenths of rain out there, so – I had a bunch of peppers, and so I was planting some habaneros and jalapenos, and then your dad, he came by, and we were talking about, I'm going to get some Carolina Reapers and ghost peppers just for the hell of it, but, um, like, man, people want to get stuff fresh from the farm, and so, you know, e- keep easing into uh, row cropping, but honestly, I would almost say for two people, you're going to be in the same boat I'm in you're growing you're new you're gonna have to buy all your equipment so you're gonna be very burdened with equipment debt that's where i'm at i'm like drowning in equipment debt because i've had to have a combine a sprayer and all these things um and you know if you can weigh the option if you have like a local co-op or company that'll spray you can kind of weigh that honestly i don't know that you come out that much cheaper i don't know if you come out any cheaper because you're paying seven dollars an acre Per, per trip plus the chemical and all I don't I don't know that you end up saving any money versus now I mean if you're working if y'all at 200 acres it might be better to just hire the spray and done but for two people man I would almost say you need about 2,000 acres before you could consider going full-time both of you and just standard row cropping just standard <laughs> row cropping if you were going to do that I feel like you would probably need two grand now it's hard. You gotta you gotta build a cash flow. Like you just gotta know, and and farming, man. I mean, it's why I've said before I drink way more farming now. It's, you don't have a guaranteed. You don't know. I mean, you just don't know. Like you can have insurance, but if you rely on insurance to farm, you're gonna go broke. I mean, you won't farm farm long. I, there's a podcast, Farm for Profit. I like that that show, and their little saying is like, "If you ain't farming for profit, then you ain't going to be farming for long." And that's yeah. so you got to make a profit, but man, grow good crops and put it out there that you're looking. Like I, I have actually never rented any ground out from any other farmer. Like I kind of, I kind of take a little pride in that that I've never done some shady dealings to get land. Most of the time, it's actually kind of almost come to me. Like, because I've let people know, like, man, I'm trying to grow. I'm trying to grow. And, and then those people will hear and they, you know, I grow good crops and, um, and then they just, they'll recommend me. So do a good job, put it out there that you're looking. Don't be afraid to, to tell, tell landlords that you're looking, but do it in a, to me, do it in a good, and other people will disagree with me. There's plenty of guys that say you call up the landlord Tell them you'll pay him so and so money. I don't operate like that. If I see a landlord and I'm interested in the land that he's got, um, I just will say, if you ever decide to change, I'd love the opportunity. And that's kind of right. that's the way I do it. If another farmer said that to my landlords, I wouldn't. I'd say, well, that's what I would do. So, just that's my my two cents. But it is very hard to make it pencil out right now i think you probably need to shoot for some older machinery and just be willing to work on it but you can't do it so much that you sacrifice all efficiency it's uh it's tough it's just tough yeah and uh, of course being in a dairy area i mean that's you know i have a little understanding of it but i don't know if there's an opportunity to do 
some stuff there which if it's a lot of just really massive operations around you you know in terms of you know maybe taking their calves and growing them out yeah know, if they've um yeah dad and them used to do that yeah which nowadays <clears throat> you know which it's it's kind of been a little bit bad for the beef industry but they're they're breeding you know like holstein cows to like angus bulls because you know especially if they don't the, you know they've got more heifers you know than they need so certain percentage of the cows so then they got those beef on dairy calves well they sell them somewhere maybe you buy those calves and and graze them out you know yeah if you've got some ground um there may be a niche there um i don't know if, if they're those are massive dairies they may already be contracted to sell them those calves a certain way or something um you just got to think outside yeah. the box it's kind of what I don't we're know, getting at. yeah i don't know what what the market's like you know if those dairies you know need to buy a lot of you know their hay and their alfalfa maybe you can get into a, a niche like that but i again i'm i, I don't really yeah i don't know uh, I, I don't know if that that's feasible or not um, that's a that's actually something did look around your area and see kind of what and again they, they the big things they may have contracted alfalfa and all that they may have that but try well, to see it, what you can feel like it, what again I'm, I'm speaking kind of outside of my area of expertise but um feel like silage harvesting and, and maybe you know they don't want to do that but in a lot of areas because that equipment is so expensive which yeah, you may not want to get into it but you got crews that travel around just harvesting silage yeah um you know or same thing maybe you, you grow silage for a local dairy but I, yeah i don't know if there's a big margin in that so yeah yeah we don't know a lot about dairy <laughs> yeah um, I, I drink whole milk that's what i can tell you i drink whole milk too yeah yeah i don't drink a fat, sissy wimpy milk two percent man the, the Come fat on. is not what's bad for you yeah it's the it's the soybean milk yeah all I, this I, row crop drink skim milk i'm like you know why don't you just drink, just water? drink water yeah i mean that's that's basically it's it's white water <laughs> yeah we drink whole milk yeah um all right joe hopefully we helped you out a little bit man um keep us posted keep us let us know how this goes because like i said man 200 acres is a great starting point um i started a i think i've shared before i started a facebook page called small and beginning farmers united and um uh, dude it's gotten almost it's up to like fifteen thousand members yeah it just all of a sudden for like for like two years it had 800 members and i would just randomly comment every now and then somebody would randomly make a post it was basically dead in the water besides just one post a month maybe and then all of a sudden i don't know how facebook groups work because it's a private group i got like some questions you got to answer so i can weed out any bots or whatever dude suddenly i just started getting like a hundred a day and now i'll get like four or five hundred people joining a day wow like it's blown up like i told marcy i was like shit i'm gonna take over the world here soon with this but no it, <laughs> it actually is pretty cool because i'm like we get enough members like this is the kind of thing where you could you could kind of get some grassroots stuff yeah. rolling and try to make some change happen um which i don't think we're gonna have time to get into the tractor cave today because we still got some more emails so that's a good teaser um for next week still haven't talked about farmer once one. yeah we got to get into that so so guys that's a this is like a, a teaser for the tractor cade because the grassroots thing is pretty much all that that is so okay and actually this question here revolves around that too yeah, so yeah, now that we're doing a lot of guest episodes we don't well when it comes to answering questions and, and talking about off subject stuff like farmer wants a wife yeah we which that fox has been skipping a week here and there like it's yeah, it's driving me crazy. Yeah, some weeks I'm like, oh, I need to catch up. And I'm like, what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, appreciate that, Joe. Uh, like I said, keep us keep us posted. And, uh, hey, you mentioned whiskey. What you drinking? Uh, I'm drinking my, my go-to. Eagle, Eagle Rare. Eagle Rare. Well, I'm, I'm, Buffalo Creek? Yeah, or Buffalo, Buffalo Trace. Trace. Yeah. Buffalo yeah. Creek, yeah. Buffalo Trace. I looked Trace. at about four different bottles tonight, and I, I was like, oh, I, gra- I grabbed them all, and I was like, all right, I'm pouring Buffalo Trace. <laughs> yeah. And I got some Eagle Rare up there, but I'm like, it's kind of like, i gotta say that <laughs> yeah well i like it because it's 80 proof so i can it's a good i can pour me a big glass and i can well, really sip it a while i kind of did that too yep. I, is buffalo trace it's probably around 80 proof yeah. 
because I had some. Uh, well, you brought that Knob Creek last time, and I poured a pretty good glass last episode. And I was feeling pretty good when we got done. I don't even know what it is. It's 120 proof because oh, I, gosh. I was like, dang, that hit me pretty good, and I looked and it's 120 proof. I had some old Forester Prohibition. I yeah, was like, that's that, 100. And, is it 120? It's 100. And, yeah, it's like 121 or something. Yeah, if I could enough. find another bottle, then one of our big episodes we would drink George T. Stag, but I. Yeah. I don't have enough to be sharing anymore. Well, I was supposed to be going to Lexington next weekend, which... Were you going to do the whiskey trail? <laughs> no, but I was like, maybe I can try to sneak away. But what it wouldn't have happened because it, what it is, my daughter's 10th birthday. And it yeah. Was my wife, my daughter, and a bunch of my daughter's friends. Good, you need to just take them to a distillery. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, 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 the reason they're going, there's a huge eventing horse show that's like, the biggest one in the U.S. every year, whatever. I don't, I don't really understand that either. Might as well be a dairy. Um, but uh, I was like, oh, while I'm up here, I need. I wonder if I can try to get because, of course, your birthday's coming up. But I don't think I'm getting to go. Yeah. Um, Dang. I, we, we had some t-ball games rained out, <coughs> and they actually scheduled us a double header for next week. And I'm oh, like, gosh. And I coach too, and I'm like, like, it, so it'd be me and him both missing. And it's a double header. I'm yeah. like, we can't go. Yeah. We're gonna have to miss the birthday trip, which it's basically a girls' trip. And I was just, you know, the two dudes were just tagging along. So that is one trip. I'm not going to Bourbon Country. Yeah, that long of it. That's that's one trip. I'm gonna. I am going to go do the whiskey trail, uh, but I've got to snag me. We got to, a lot of listeners now. Do any of you guys know where I can snag a bottle of the Sacred George T. Stag? That is my favorite. It's 140 proof. I, I got a bottle in there. I think it's 137 or 138, which I didn't know it was so rare. So I was drinking it regularly. And then I go back in the liquor store because it was getting down kind of low. And I'm like, hey, I need another bottle of that George D. Stag. And it was expensive. But he's like, I, he said, I don't have another bottle of that. And I said, well, when do you think you'll get it? And he said, that's the only bottle we've ever had. <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh. So so I haven't even drinking like it was water. Yeah. You're mixing it with the Dr. Pepper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mountain Dew. Yeah. But, no. No, but uh so I now it's like all of my really expensive bottles of bourbon, they're like they have like they'll never be finished. Like yeah. I've got some really high dollar well, bottles. See, I'm like that too, and then I've got so I'm like, all right, I gotta, I need to finish off some of these just to so make some room. I've been making the Infinity bottle, but yeah. not, but not with my high dollar ones. So, all right, David writes in, and uh, guys, let us comment again. We want to know what you guys are drinking. Let us know that. Uh, I don't know if I ever shared with any of them, with any of our listeners, that we did have a, a sober company reach out wanting us to, to kind of link up with us. I don't think I mentioned it. Uh, and it, hey, I think it's a cool thing. I don't remember what it was called, yeah, Sober yeah. Cowboy or something. I'll give mm-hmm. them a shout out. Um, I think this this woman had started it, and it's for it's to help like with addiction and stuff. And she actually messaged us wanting to kind of link up with us, and but they're they're not pro alcohol. And uh, well, I mean, we just tell her, yeah, I don't think it'd be a great fit. Yeah, we were like, we basically we I don't. It's very rare that we do an episode where alcohol is not consumed. So I, I said, but I was like, I appreciate and what we're, you're and doing. We're open about it. It's not like we're sipping it. And, yeah, and, and, like and, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just got here taking um, a drink. Yeah. So no, we're all about moderation. Yeah, ha- drink responsibly. Having a drink. If you are struggling, reach out to the sober cowboy. If yeah, you, if absolutely. you are, uh, yeah, I think maybe drugs and everything. Um, oh, yeah, I'm uh, sure it's. Yeah, I would think coaxing, everything. Yeah. Uh, David Seward. He's uh, I think David's been a listener for a long time, too. Um, so, yeah, my name is David Seward from southeastern Virginia. I wrote in a few weeks ago and mentioned the tractor of 1979. All right, David, you got to hold that suspense for one more week, but you'll get it next week. And that actually is good because I, I was still wanting to go down some more stuff. So we should have one hell of an episode on the tractor cade next week. Yeah, well, I, well, I have to try to stay on subject and get into that because I'm sure we could talk about it for an hour. Yes. Um, so my question is for Logan. Do you have a video on the process for starting your farm store on your YouTube channel? I'm greatly interested in hearing about the steps and getting something like that started and challenges you might have faced or things that you didn't know needed to be done to do so. This is your YouTube idea. 
<laughs> I'm, I'm being serious. Like, yeah. Logan and I were just talking off air before we started recording. He hadn't been doing his, his YouTube channel. Yeah, I'm like three weeks uh, out or uh, something. Because I keep refreshing. I'm like, I search because I'm like, he was committed to doing a video a week. At I least. was. I but, was. Um, but, it, it, you know, trying to find something to make you unique or different. Yep. Uh, it, yeah, but the farm store thing. Well, I tell you, there is a dude that's crushing it in that arena. Uh, okay. Farmer Dre. Have you ever seen his YouTube? No. I've gone down because because we're starting the farm store. Like, I've been looking at guys doing what we're doing. Farmer Dre, he's a young guy. I don't even know if he's 30. See, yours will be unique because you're going to show him from, you know, basically. Starting, yeah. Yeah, from from beginning. Like, it's cool and all to see somebody that's already got it up and going. Yeah. Um, but... But and and two, what's like Matt Griggs was talking about? You know, he wants those videos so he can look back thirty years from now. And be like, Man, that would be pretty cool, actually. But it'd be like, you'd be like, dang, I don't even remember that we did that at the farm store. And yeah, I'd be first, like, that yeah. first year, the the whatever crop totally failed. I didn't even remember you knowing, <laughs> yeah. you know. But but their sweet corn did fantastic, you know, or whatever. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that I need to do that. Just, just I need to. Just, just, kind of for it to be archived well there's your answer david i have not um i have not but i'll I'll try to work on that i will i'll I'll put some some work into that and try to just document that but i don't have any in there but it's been a journey he said as always i greatly enjoy the podcast and look forward to each week to listen to y'all's new episode uh always appreciate you writing in david and uh like i said man we're building the suspense. Next week, we are going to get into the tractor gate of 1979. I watched like four videos on it on YouTube. Now, listen, there's actually not many podcasts that talk about it. Um, I've listened to one podcast that, that did a pretty decent run on it, but it was still pretty short. So I want to talk about it and kind of, again, do kind of a compare and contrast of uh, today and that. So, yeah. Yeah. But uh, all right, David, I appreciate it, man. Uh, yeah, I'd be checking. I may may try to work on that. All right, that I think has us caught up. <clears throat> so before we get into our last little thing, I do got to mention, man. I I was supposed to mention on here about the rodeo that was going on like two weeks ago yeah. that we did it that was going on at the Agri Center. My buddy Keith he texted me and was like, man, he said I love the show. Um, he said, we're doing this, him and several other local guys are the ones, I guess, that put it on. It was high school rodeo, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, man, I really wanted to go. And he was like, I wish you'd share it. So I did at least, I, last minute, I was like, oh, crap, we forgot to mention it on air. So I put it up on, like, our Instagram and Facebook and all that But um, at the Agri Center. But, man, it was cool. I didn't get to go, but it looked really cool because they had, like, steer wrestling and bull riding. and oh, yeah, yeah that's high, high school. school. They do. They do all the, all the rough stock, all the timed events, everything. Yeah. Um, well, that's what, and of course, you had shared it. I was out of town. My Saturdays, like, I can just go and tell everybody, if you need me to do something on a Saturday, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, well, like, literally, next Saturday, I was like, we were going to be in Lexington. Well, now I'm not going to Lexington, but it's because we got T-ball. <laughs> yeah. Like, literally, every single Saturday, we are. That's to my wife's like, we need to we need to do a date night. Like, we, I can't tell you the last time we had a date night, but, like, Saturday is really the only night for us to go. Um, I guess we, you could do a week night, but there's always too much going on with yeah. the kids for school and whatnot. I mean, and, uh, like, literally, if we're not at a softball tournament, we're at a horse show, or we're you know, my wife's still dealing with some things with her her dad's estate and all. Yeah. And uh, so we're in Middle Tennessee. Like, we have not, like, I have not been at home on a Saturday. I mean, I couldn't tell you the last time. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that, that was, that's my excuse. Sorry, Keith. I, I would have loved to have gone. My yeah. kids would have loved to have we gone. We had to go to a wedding. And, yeah, I would have, I would have loved to have gone. Hell, I, I love the rodeo, man. That's that stuff is oh, yeah. awesome to me. Shoot, we we turn on the cowboy channel at home. Like that's uh, usually if there's a ball game on that involves University of Tennessee, I'm I'm probably watching that. If, if that's not the case, I'm watching YouTube or I've got it on the cowboy channel. Yeah, um, yeah. I just had a crazy, crazy idea pop in my head for it for a new rodeo that I I don't know that I've ever seen. <laughs> Are you getting nervous already? <laughs> no, I'm just already thinking. I'm like, ah, I probably know what he's going to say. Well, 
<laughs> you know, there's a lingerie football league. There's not I a lingerie. Where I was going with it, but uh, uh, see, I kept it a little I, I clean. Don't, I don't think the lingerie football league really took off. <laughs> but they they got that. Why don't they have women riding bulls in lingerie? I think just women riding bulls in general is is already kind of. I don't know what's the right word. Uh, already kind of on the edge. Barrel racing would be a little more. That'd be more fun to watch. Yeah, because I'll be honest, it's that, boring. As somebody who used to really be into that. When I'm when we're watching, which a lot of times when I'm watching on the Cowboy Channel, it's not live, so I'll fast forward through the barrel racing. <laughs> barrel racing is so boring. Or that's when I get up and and heck, I understand it, you know, better than most. And still, it's like, yeah, I, we'll just get to the bull riding because <laughs> yes. all it's all it's the last time to vent before you watch the bull. See, ride if it was the, if it was a lingerie league, it'd be more enticing. Maybe a little, but I mean, I don't know. Um, so then you think we need to stick with the lingerie bull rat? I, I don't know that. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm going to try to be nice. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know. Well, like, in this day and age with the damn phone and Instagram, if you want to see a chick in lingerie. <coughs> it's, yeah, it's, but it's, how many of them can you see riding a bull? Oh, you're right. There's the novelty of that. But it if is. you just want to see a, a woman who's a damn nine or a ten in lingerie, like literally there, those are – a dime a dozen. <laughs> I think I've got a million dollar idea. The lingerie bull riding league. Yeah. I, I, I don't know that you have me convinced to be an investor <laughs> yet. Because um, first of all, I think the percentage of women that are even willing to get on a bull is so tiny. Well, the bad part is the so percentage tiny. of women that you would want to see in lingerie yeah, that would want to get on a bull would probably be next. pretty yeah, slim. The, 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 <laughs> It, it, you're you're like one in a hundred thousand women, probably less than that, that actually get on will be willing to get on a bull. <laughs> and then yeah, the percentage of those that, like I say, yeah, if, if you're just wanting to see a hot chick in a in lingerie, get on Instagram. <laughs> like, <coughs> All right. Speaking of hot chicks, farmer wants a wife. That's right. That's right. Um, oh, and I will say, keep keep us posted if y'all got a, if y'all do another local event. Uh, be sure and shoot it to me in text, and, and I will get it on here before. I do apologize for not putting that on the show. But, uh, yeah, I'll keep you guys yeah, up to date on that. Yeah, because we love watching them on TV, on YouTube, or whatever. But, yeah, yeah, nothing better than actually going to the rodeo. Yeah, and like I say, kid, my kids would love it. Um, so, yeah, Farmer Wants a Wife, man. Uh, man, um, we, do, we are going to have Brandon back on the show, and we're actually going to have one of the ladies on the show. Because we've already, and I mean, she's like, she's actually pretty fired up about coming on the show. She's she, she got a lot, lot of grievances to air. Apparently. Yes, yeah, <laughs> no, like she's no, not necessarily. We, she's not. She, she's not giving us any spoilers. Yeah, um, yeah. We don't know who ends up, you know, picking who. But no, I've tried. I've like I've asked Brandon. I'm like, dude, who who which is? Which I really don't know because you know, like some of this stuff. Like you can get like gambling odds on it. Like you could potentially profit. Like I don't know if there's any sports books there that, on that. that have gambling odds on the show. Um, wow, but, uh, I didn't think about that. But yeah, you know, maybe on like The Bachelor or some of them. Yeah, you know, there may be some like really obscure sports book somewhere where you can get odds on Farmer Wants a Wife. Yeah. But, uh, well, what's your so what's your thoughts on the show now? So in the last episode, they all met the parents basically. Yeah. Um, or, or met the family. Yeah, it, it, it kind of threw a wrench in everything because pretty much every one of them was kind of like, all right, I'm leaning towards this girl. And then the family was like, no, I like her the <laughs> least. You yeah. need to pick one of the other ones. And then like, yeah. it's like totally screwed everything up. Cause, um, like Sydney with, with Mitchell. Mitchell. Yeah, because his mom liked the one chick that was just like, I want to have kids now. Yes. Which everybody, anybody who's young and, and newly wed, you know, you, you know this already. But your parents want you to have kids now. Yes. Like most all, you know, soon to be grandparents, they want to be grandparents. My parents, because my wife and I took us five years. Yeah. And um, we just, we didn't want to have kids yet. And uh, like it was constant, it's not stop. Like, why, why haven't you had kids yet? Why aren't you going to have kids? You know, you're all having problems. <laughs> you, you know, you know I'm like, oh, no, I'm pretty sure we know how it all works. And yeah. <laughs> We just we hadn't pulled the goalie yet, you know. Yeah. And, um, so, I, it's part of me, and, and part of me, and I, I can't even remember all the chicks' names, but I wonder, like, did she say that just because she she knew that she was 
I think all his girls knew that Sydney was. They were all trying to catch her, and so that was her like throwing I up want a kids Hail Mary, immediately throwing up a Hail Mary. Yeah, because it's like what like. And again, we don't see anything other than what they want us to see. As far yes, as talking about the producers, but like he and Sydney have been meant to be from episode one. Oh yeah, and then now all of a sudden, just because his mom wants him to have grandkids right away, he's going to pick this other chick that I literally I couldn't even tell you her name because she's been on the yeah. back burner the whole. So surely they're just trying to create a little drama and and suspense before they narrow it down. Yeah, because. Yeah, I still think with him, I was like, you got to pick Sydney. Um, I don't know, uh, Nathan. I'm trying to remember. Uh, He's got the little. We he had the little short blonde head chick we like, Taylor. Yeah, Taylor. Um, and then Mackenzie is the one that came on there. Came back. Yeah. Which I, I still think Taylor's got yeah, it. Right. I'm still like I'm the same way. Like I, Taylor seems like the one there. Uh, is Ty down to just two? Yeah, because that chick left. It's oh. Melody and uh, Megan. Yeah. Which I like had, Melody. Well, but Megan had seemed like kind of the leader in the clubhouse oh, yeah. there. She does. Melody, yeah, it's like, oh, gosh, you know. Melody follows us on Instagram, so I'm inclined to, to lean, to root for her. And she's kind of a hard ass. Like, uh, she's got she's got a bit of a foul mouth, and she don't really put up with much. I guess you've seen that just through social media. Yeah, yeah. like on our on our Instagram page because she followed us, and so then I followed her back, and uh, just because I was like, ah, oh, it's a chick from Farmer Wants a Wife, and yet she's uh, she don't she don't f around. Uh, what well, one thing neat about social media, which I mean, again, like Instagram is like half of Instagram is just chicks in bikinis. It seems <laughs> like. Um, but uh of course they they're pretty modest on the tv show um the slogan pulls up but some of the ladies when you when you end up following them on social media like creepy old dudes do um like you're like whoa they put some stuff there like i knew she was pretty from the tv show but this is like this wow. yeah yeah like this is definitely a side of her and it of course it's, it's instagram there's no nudity or anything but it's just like damn uh, and I, I can't even remember her name. I can always remember just her Instagram handle. One of the girls from last season. Uh, Gosh, I can't remember her name either. Uh, and like on the TV show, you're like, yeah, she's pretty. You know, I mean, nice looking lady. And then you're like, you and pull up she, her Instagram, you're like, holy hell. Like, Yeah, then she's, it's her birthday. So she put up a birthday suit photo and you're yeah. like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, it's like, whoa. oh my gosh. Which again, that she's very strategically Re- Rebecca is that, is that right that don't sound right that's her oh, I don't think she must have changed her name no. <laughs> maybe no. she changed her name I don't <laughs> yeah, well, whatever anyway uh, off subject yeah you have to follow them on Instagram you're like whoa now, now I know what she looks like wearing lingerie speaking yeah. of lingerie she might hey she might be into the bull riding thing she's a horse rider tell you what I, I i don't know that i want to see her get on the bull <laughs> <laughs> she, she's too pretty to get get banged up on the yeah. bull yeah yeah well that yeah i, I would I, cry if she got her face <laughs> like smashed. oh man yeah uh i think megan probably has got the edge over melody yeah. but i like melody melody i don't know if you listen to the show but i hey i'm i'm rooting for you since i've seen her on the motorcycle on instagram i'm rooting for her too <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, if I had you know gun to my head, I'd say Mitchell will pick Sydney, Nathan will pick Taylor, Ty will pick Megan. As of right now, Brandon's has kind of got, gotten the, it's the, the whole thing. Well, and I guess go back even further on his, because obviously things went sideways with him and Joy when she talked about how she has zero empathy for yes, everyone. yeah. But then she kind of opened up to him later that about her issues with epilepsy, yeah, and how that uh, dude uh, Brandon, I just. I appreciate what a softy Brandon is. Now he starts crying with her. Yeah, well, and I, and the cynical side of me is like, are they making this shit up? You know, <laughs> like I, I'm always skeptical of all that. Like, yeah, well, not, yeah, everything from the girl wanting to have kids. I'm like she's just saying that to try to <laughs> get in good with the grandma. But um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of like wow. But you know, yeah, that and part of me is like, what? It, and I I kind of understood what she was saying, but it's like. Does that mean you don't have empathy? Like, well, that's kind of how I was. I was like, I was kind of like, 
well, what's this got to do with anything? Well, and like you can you can come at it from all different ways, and I guess nobody, you know, I've never been in those sh- shoes, but uh, it's like I don't know that I could say where it could make you more empathetic potentially. But, That's, uh, yeah, yeah, but yeah, you know, I, I kind of she kind of it's kind of like the meme. It's like I ain't gonna lie, they had us in the first half. Like <laughs> man, she, she she made a total comeback where it's she like, did. Um, uh, yeah. So who are you calling for him? You got to pick one. So I think it's that. It does, is it's it just still, her and Emerson left? Or is no, it, Grace still there. Grace, so, yeah, that tells you where Grace is. He's uh, going. He Apparently in this next episode, they have to send home down to two. Okay. Well, I would I would definitely say Julian Emerson are his final two. Um, uh, I would still lean towards Emerson, but, man, that, that, like I say, Joy, you know, she was down by like 20 at halftime and, and, and made a – Incredible comeback there in she the third did. quarter. She did. So we're, we're waiting on the fourth quarter to see. I like uh, the the sports reference. Yeah, yeah she, she tied it up. <laughs> she came back from twenty points down at halftime to tie it up at the end of the third quarter, and so her and Emerson got to battle it out through the last episode or two. Yeah, yeah, man. I don't know. I I'm I kind of think that old Grace might still pull something out of the hat. So I, like I said, I couldn't even remember her. Name. Just because yeah. it's like, man. Well, see, originally... Which some of you wonders, like, how much does... Because the production gets to decide, like, okay, we don't... We're not even going to really highlight that relationship. Well, I do know that that was one of the... That's been some frustrations. Yeah. Is that they've they've cut out, like, like when they met with the parents. Some of them didn't get enough... It didn't get the time to where it makes it almost look like they didn't even talk to the parents. Damn that, trying yeah. to get in my drink. Well, that's... And I've seen that, They you know, edit it pretty... Yeah, right. Heavily. Any reality TV show, right? When people say, "Well, like, yeah, they they only show the parts where I'm being an asshole," you know, they mm-hmm. show the other ninety percent where, I, yeah. Man, whatever. if I was on one, I'd look like a dummy. Well, like, it's just all what what the, what the producers want you to look like. Yeah, um, so, a dummy. Yeah, probably. Um, yeah, that's. I'm gonna say Nathan with Taylor, Ty with Megan. Um. But again, I want to preface that one, or I want to I want to add with that one. I'm rooting, I, and I hate to say that I'm rooting for either one of them because Megan is really cool too. She seems like she seems like a good woman. But the thing that which and his daughter apparently digs Melody and Megan, but I think Megan's a little more motherly than Melody. But now I don't want to have any more kids, so. Um, but I'm gonna still say probably Megan with Ty, uh, Taylor with Nathan. Mitchell, I still think with Sydney and uh, Brandon, I'm going to say I originally had said Grace, and I'm just going to stand by that. I'll go with Emerson. Um, Emerson's who I'm rooting for. So Emerson's who I'm rooting for. Maybe that's me um, yep. picking with my heart, not with my head. But uh, Yeah, I'm, yeah. I am rooting for Emerson, which I, I have, like, I, you know, I I think she probably has a little bit of unfair advantage because my daughter's name is Emerson, so yeah, I'm like yeah. I got to pull for. Her. But uh, they definitely seem to have the most physical uh, relationship. Yeah, which Brandon didn't understand. I, I was making a sarcastic remark to him, and it's hard you lose this over text. Oh yeah, in text <clears throat> you can't do the sarcasm font. Yeah. But he, it was like Fox or somebody had shared the clip and. And it's them in the hot tub, and it's like, what's your love language? And uh, she's like, it, I guess Brandon asked her, what's her love language? And she's like, what would you say? And he's like, well, definitely physical touch. And uh, I sent that to Brandon, and I said, how did you know it was physical touch, man? Like, just being like a dummy. And he was like, well, man, you know, she really, like, he, like, actually explained it. And I'm like, dude, I was actually just, like, well, being stupid. And, again, you don't see all the rest of their interaction. Yeah. But the TV show definitely only shows that. that yeah, that. very, very physical touch. So, but yeah, Brandon is going to, he is definitely going to come back on the show. And we're going to really get into the spud thing because that just fascinates the crap out of me. I, I made some instant potatoes tonight. Hey, there you go, man. Which I don't know, for, for a potato guy, they probably are like, that, that's like blasphemy. To well, he was planting some barley for Coors like I last saw, I saw he posted that. Um, yep. No. I sent him a picture because I was actually planting. I don't know if this is illegal, but I was drinking a Coors Light, and I was planting on my farm. And I was not, I wasn't on the road, but yeah. I sent him a picture of my Coors Light and the planter, and he was like, yeah. "Hey, man, that's what we." He was like, "All right, you supporting what we planting?" Yeah, if you, as long as you're not on the road. Yeah. Yeah. No, I wasn't in the road. 
Um, you can't get in trouble for drinking beer while you're mowing your yard. Well, that's I mean. true. I'm just in a big old lawnmower pretty yeah. much. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, there you go. There's your farmer wants a wife update for us. I would like to know y'all's predictions. Do y'all agree? And again, I, I've never really used Spotify a lot, but you apparently can. There's a question that's automatically on there. So you can respond on there. So either respond, email us, comment on YouTube, or comment on Spotify. Let us know your predictions for Farmer Wants a Wife. And uh, and then the giveaway, Bobby and I still got to, we got to iron out all that. Um, I think we do probably similar to like we did last time and just uh, make it where I don't know. I, I still don't know if we need to do, like, bring them in studio or give well, something we away. Could, we could even almost give them the option. You know, it's like some of those giveaways where they're, like, giving away a truck. like, Or you can just take, like, 20 grand in cash. You can get Bobby Lee's Jeep. No. <laughs> no it, it, to be clear, yeah, we're not giving away a truck or 20 grand in cash. And his Jeep can... will not be cleaned uh, when you get it. <laughs> My God. I was looking at it earlier, like, just the amount of junk in the pasture floorboard. <laughs> I was like, I really need to clean that out. Yes. It's terrible. It's terrible. When I rode in it, yeah, you just like it raked everything in the floor. Man, there, there's so many odd, like mis <coughs> mismatched glo leather gloves. <laughs> I got a huge spotlight. There's one of the floodlights off the front that a cow kicked off. <laughs> yes. The floorboard. Man. A bunch of empty plastic. Your dad water kept that thing so, like, pristine. He's like, the bumper's bent. And it's all, I was like, Bo both issues on the front end are where I've either ran into the back end of a one was a bull he had gotten out and he was in my driveway and i was mad it's like i was ramping and bumped him i didn't think it would bend it but it did and then i was pulling in the you're like i was only that. doing 50. and a cow one of the heifers kicked the front of the jeep and knocked the little floodlight off dang that's pretty precise kicking oh i was like what the like what are the odds of that yeah geez it's not uncommon for them to be in the driveway in front of me and i'm just kind of having to move them along yeah I was like, she kicked it right off. It's hanging hang by the wires. <laughs> um, yeah, and then it's just dirty. Yeah, well, yeah, I probably won't be giving away a vehicle. But we'll do a really bad the bone giveaway. Do a lot of the same thing. Um, center around, you know, leave us in a rating and review. And, uh, guys, we, we appreciate y'all leaving us rating and reviews, and we'd love for you to continue to do so. And I, I'm going to figure out a way to where we can – you know, it'll recognize, like, if you've leave, leave or left a uh, review so that it doesn't kind of screw the people that already have. But, um, yeah, guys, and I guess also you need to go to agzaga. Oh, wait a minute. I'm about to skip our, our American-made thing. Yeah, yeah, man. What, what, what you doing? I got to find him. Where is he? Did I do it last week? He don't, he don't know where he is. No, Corbett did it last week. That's right. That's right. Crap. Start off with two words. Made in America. All right. I'm trying to think. I ordered some stuff. I I, I can I can do a good one and I didn't even okay. realize it we'll until do I it. just looked it up because we talked about it earlier. Those um commodity jugs from agzaga.com. And again, I, oh, yeah. I, I I'll have to admit, I did not buy mine from Agzaga because I've had them for well, two or three years before, yeah. I, before I knew Exag existed, but they're made by VP Racing Fuels. Most people have seen the, these jugs, and you know, because you look at them, you're like, "Yes, that's what I want to buy to put my gas in." Yeah, but they're made in USA. Um, that, I did not realize that until I was on Exag's website. I almost them. asked you earlier when you were talking about them if they were made. What in I USA. saw it was it's like, "All right, we'll, we'll circle back to this later." Our, my man Timmy Kenny, that used to be, he is the he was the baddest welder I've ever seen. God rest his soul. He passed away, I guess, earlier. It was this year, or this year, or yeah. last year. Yeah, I believe it was last year. Yeah. Um, man, he was the baddest welder I've ever seen in my life. I uh, thought the world of Timmy. He had these on his truck because he was the first one I saw him. Because he used to tell me when I had my service truck, he was like, "Boy, you need to go get you some of these. They're the best." Like, and that's exactly what they were. They were these VP racing. Well, that, I guess that's how they get around it because apparently the government says you can't make gas cans without these fancy ass stupid yeah. stupid nozzles that don't work and you make a mess and nobody understands how they work well they've been added to my cart and i'm gonna be using a code and that code is talk dirt all caps all one word yes. i am gonna use my own code i don't even care well no i, I would too but but when i bought them because again I, I bought them before i 
even knew it may have been before Exact existed. I have to go back and listen to Jared's episode when they officially launched. Um, I paid more than that for them. I know. Really. And they didn't come with the full nozzle. It was almost like uh. because they. So then you had to buy the nozzle kit separate. These are all set up. Um, yeah, you can't officially call them fuel cans, <laughs> but everybody knows good and well when you buy the red ones, you're putting gasoline in there. Um, but uh, yeah, the bail net wrap. I mean, bailing season like. I've got some fescue that I was looking at the other day. I was like, man, it, it can be cut like <clears throat> here just any time now. Yeah. Um, of course, our big challenge this time of year is finding a, a dry spell, which, you know, we, we still continue to be relatively dry. We do. It's been kicking my butt. Um, I got planted, and then I was going to spray right behind the planter, and now, now I'm going to have to go a whole different route on the chemical because it was just too wet. Which for some people they'll be glad to hear. I am still going to do a large portion of mine planting green. I yeah. I just like it, man. I just like doing it, and I'm hell. I just ain't got time to to otherwise. But uh, I'm ta- I'm kind of I'm tailoring the chemical a little bit. I had some chemical damage on some, and there was a certain chemical I think it was just too much residual. So I'm taking it out of the mix. Should still get a good kill. And, and I mean, I'm eliminating one pass, so I'm saving quite a bit of money. So, um, still going to do that. We're good deal. But yeah, y'all go get you those commodity jugs and use the code talk dirt on agzaga.com. Get free shipping. I want Jared off. to text me in the next week and be like, dude. We, we sold, sold out. Of, we sold out of those jugs. We weren't expecting y'all to push that product. We sold 2,000. Uh, commodity jugs in 24 hours you never know when the government's going to sweep in and be like no you can't even buy those anymore even though they don't say yeah so, so you need to stock up it's like buying a guns and ammo you just buy it now while you can get your hands on it you need to buy at least 10 um you know before those were like became a thing you know buying like the old style um gas cans like at yard sales and stuff was like a like there was a huge market for like those old yes. style ones yeah um because you can't buy them anymore that these yeah, yeah, yeah. Leave it to the government to screw something up. Yeah. All right, guys. Uh, comment below. Leave us a rating and a review. And uh, hey, leave us some uh, ideas of guests. If you got a guest yeah, idea, I, I, shoot you, us an email. You, you took the words out of my mouth. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we're always. You know, we, we've been. We've had some. That's what people have been texting me, messaging me. I'm like, man, you know, y'all have had some really cool guests. Like, yeah. I mean, these are people that. I don't know that I ever dreamed that that would actually you know come on our show. So it's. I've got a pretty bad to the bone. One in the works there i'll tell you about off air well but yeah that, you know that's because we have an audience um yeah people are listening um the more it grows the more we can pull some people yeah yeah well um like i say we're, we're gonna have uh hunter biden on um, sometime <laughs> we're getting close to election time yeah he so. might want to do some blow you know i you know i mean I, that's an agricultural product yeah i bet he country but i bet hunter would invest in my bull riding idea you know, I I think he's got some uh, some some odd um, <laughs> kinks or fetishes. Um, <laughs> yeah, assuming all those laptop photos are real. <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. Yeah, but um, anyway, anyway. All right, guys, we'll catch you next week.